Thank you, Madam President. Thank you very much for inviting me to participate in this very important debate. I'm speaking today for the motion that this House will support a Cold War with China, but communist China, not China itself. I am not anti-China. I love my people, and I love China. When I left China when I was 13 years old to Canada, I continued my exploration in the culture's great literature, philosophy. And I know that by heart, the China's philosophical and cultural tradition does not necessarily set it against Western values. In fact, it is entirely possible for a strong and prosperous China to coexist with the West. Look at Taiwan, or look to history. For centuries, China embraced the Confucian outlook and was mostly an inward-oriented empire. If anything, in the 19th centuries, it was the West, the colonial powers, along with Japan and Russia, that posed a major threat to China, not the other way around. But today's China is different. We're now dealing with a one-party authoritarian, mercantilist state that is openly hostile to Western value and the international system. In considering China's threat, communist China's threat, there are many angles we could explore. We could talk about China's economic warfare, how its state-sanctioned intellectual property theft has cost Western nations trillions of dollars annually, or its exploitation of the WTO. We could talk about China's cyber warfare. UK just signed a deal supporting Huawei to be a leading role in its 5G network building. That's like inviting a Trojan horse. We could talk about China's military buildup. Its aggression in the South China Sea not only threatens regional peace and open trade, but undermines the international law that preserves openness and order. We could talk about China's support to North Korea or Iran, or how it hijacks the Human Rights Council in the UN, or its support for undemocratic and kleptocratic states in Africa, or how it exports its civilians' technology to help other nations crack down on dissent. We could talk about its lax regulatory system brings dangerous exports to our shores, or its censorship of information endangers global health. Now the coronavirus outbreak is a perfect example. Or we, I can tell you personally how the Chinese government targets family of political dissidents abroad. When I was crowned Miss World Canada in 2015, because I used the platform to speak about China's human rights abuses, my father in China was threatened by the security agents. His business dismantled. Now my grandparents and him are both banned, all banned from traveling outside. I could go on, but for tonight's forum, I'm going to take a novel approach by asking, how does China see us? Does the Chinese Communist Party already consider itself to be in a Cold War with the West? As a child in China, I remember being indoctrinated with the propaganda of the hostile foreign forces. We were repeatedly told that the Western power subjugated and humiliated China in the 19th century, and these old grievances were kept alive to divert domestic discontent. We were told over and over again that even today, the West continue to covertly undermine, isolate, destabilize the country. Any expression of discontent within China, including the protests of Tibetan Buddhist, Falun Gong practitioner, democracy activists, are all blamed to the black hand of anti-China forces in the West. Chinese courageous human rights lawyers are being called agents of foreign hostile forces. The pattern continues today. The Chinese government claim that the West is behind Hong Kong's pro-democracy movement and the Taiwanese government. Essentially, all domestic problems are blamed onto the invisible enemy of the West. Let's look at some recent development in China to see what that can tell us about this country's motive. In 2017, China banned foreign NGOs from operating within the country unless they submit to government control. Even environmental groups and women's health groups have to have their annual report 
and their annual plans being approved by the police. The Chinese government claimed that this is to ensure that these NGOs do not subvert the country. Now, why would the Chinese government worry that these foreign NGOs would do anything harmful to China? Perhaps because the Chinese control groups are doing exactly this in our countries. Beijing backed numerous front organizations, civil societies in Western society. These groups act as an extension to the party and state apparatus. They are oftentimes mobilized to influence local election results or policies in the West. These groups are controlled directly by the United Front Department and the Office of Overseas Chinese. But these connections are often concealed from the public. Now let's look at another example. In 2016, Chinese government banned the talk of democracy, universal human rights, rule of law in Chinese classrooms and curriculum. That is a clear signal that the Chinese Communist Party sees the Western value as a threat to its ideology and its view on the importance of indoctrinating its youth on the right political view. While Western ideas are not allowed into Chinese classroom, Western universities have ceded control of their own program to the Communist Party through Confucius Institute. The Confucius Institute presents itself as a non-profit language program, but is actually directly controlled by the Communist Party, including its propaganda ministry. A senior communist official has said that the Confucius Institute is an important part of China's overseas propaganda effort. Yet these institutes are embedded in hundreds of universities in the West, raising troubling questions on academic freedom and freedom of expression on university campuses. The, the story is similar in entertainment and media area. China obsessively censors the internet. It only allows a small number of foreign film into the country each year, carefully screened, carefully edited. Even children's animated film like Zootopia is attacked as Western propaganda. Now, the situation in the West is vastly different. New York Times, Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, Telegraph, these papers all run paid news supplements from China Daily, a communist mouthpiece. Companies with deep ties with the Chinese Communist Party are now buying or entering joint ventures with major Hollywood studios, creating strong financial incentive for self-censorship. Chinese companies already own some of the biggest movie theater chains in the West. Now this, they get to control what the Western audience get to see or not to see, what is getting to produce, what not. It's increasingly unlikely that we will see a film that is produced about the Cultural Revolution, the Tiananmen Massacre, Tibetan, Falun Gong, or Uyghurs in the Hollywood. Now, one may say that our democratic and open Western values are more resilient than Chinese brutal authoritarianism. I wish that were true, but it isn't. Lured by self-interest, our institutions are proven all too willing to give up human rights and free speech. Western companies know that their technology are helping the Chinese government to surveil its own system through an infamous social credit system. Yet they still deal with them. We all know that Huawei's 5G technology is a Trojan horse that will affect our future, our children's future. But yet, we just signed a deal with them. Our values are already compromised. Our way of life is already conceded. But let me remind you that the human rights atrocities, the injustice that are happening within Chinese border cannot be contained. It will bleed out to every silent bystanders in the world. And the coronavirus outbreak is a perfect example of that. On December 1st, Chinese government has already discovered the first case of coronavirus in Wuhan. Yet the local officials spend the first period of time suppressing the news, arrested eight courageous doctors for, quote, spreading rumor and destabilized the society. The local government even went as far as hosting 100,000 people to a public Chinese New Year dinner just to show that Wuhan is as prosperous as ever and as safe as ever. This is reminiscent of what happened in Chernobyl. 
The Soviets did not admit the nuclear accident until Sweden had picked up its fallout and threatened to report it to International Atomic Energy Agency. The Chinese government did not reveal the virus and report it about or confirm the virus outbreak until the first overseas case was detected in Thailand. One may ask, why did the Chinese officials take such a risk? The mentality of Chinese communist officials is that they are willing to gamble on human life in the sake of their own rule. And this mentality is the same from the smallest town to the central government in Beijing. The sole purpose for Chinese Communist Party is to stay in power, disregarding the cost of human life. There are many doctors, courageous doctors and nurses, using different channels to tell, try to tell the world the truth about the outbreak. They reported that the hospitals are over capacity. Doctors and nurses are, are infected. Many people are turned away to self-quarantine at home. Many people are dying. The life under authoritarian Chinese Communist Party is a life without God's grace. It's a life where your innate worth as a human being is never recognized and your value is judged solely on your use for the Chinese Communist Party. And that was my childhood. I want to close by reminding everyone that supporting a Cold War with China, Chi Communist China, you're standing with the Chinese people by confronting a regime that's brought turmoil and suffering onto this ancient land for decades. I also want to leave you with this question. If the Chinese Communist government does not treat its own citizen with any respect, why should us in the West expect ourselves to be treated any differently? Thank you.